at that moment, I just knew, like, I knew that there was, um, I knew that there was something wrong. And, um, anyway, I just, I, I remember, like, my heart just sunk, and I was like, well, this can't be happening, like, this is... Today is my six week postpartum checkup. Cannot believe it's been already six weeks. It blows my mind. But, <laughs> the kids. Hey guys, don't get all the straws dirty. Um, okay. um, no, now we have to wash all of these because you've been blowing your spit through them. We are going to head out in about an hour and a half um, for my postpartum checkup. <sighs> I think it'll go good. Get signed off to be able to start. Yeah, I know it's the 4th of July. Whose birthday is it? Me! It's my birthday. No, whose birthday is it? No. What is it? Yeah, America's birthday. It's a girl that just up. America is the country that we live in, remember? It's a boy. Ah, it's Lady Liberty. Mama. Back to my appointment. I think it's gonna go well. Um, so we will let you guys hey, know how that goes. Today is actually, or well, yesterday was actually the four year anniversary of us finding out that we um, lost our daughter Annabelle. We were 20 weeks along. And, um, and then on Jane, or not January. <laughs> On July 1st will be her birthday. Um, anyway, it's kind of crazy. Cannot believe it's been four years since losing her. <sighs> it's a lot that, um, I feel like we've talked about it some, and then there's a lot of details that we've never talked about just because we haven't really ever had the, well, we've had the opportunity, but we haven't felt like it was the right opportunity. So we're gonna take a minute to talk about um, Annabelle and just the whole like dealing with losing so late in a pregnancy and um, how we grieved and how we found out and all the things. Like two weeks before, I had just started feeling her kick at like 18 weeks I think and I was I remember telling you at like probably 19 weeks, I was like, I haven't felt her kick. Uh, we didn't know her gender by then though. Yeah, no. Um, I was like, I haven't felt her kick, I'm worried. And in my in my heart, I felt like I knew there was, I just knew there was something wrong or that was going to happen. Um, but I think at that point I was just like, oh, it's fine, we'll wait, we have, you know, we'll wait till 20 weeks when we go to find out gender. Um, and then the day that we went to find out, or well, we were on our way home, weren't we? No. From no, work? No. No, that's when we found out Evelyn's gender, but we found out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, we dropped off the at, kids. Yeah, at the ultrasound. Okay, well, we dropped so we, off Gideon. Oh, yeah, yeah we, Gideon. um, that's right. So we dropped, I, I called my mom and I said, I think there's something wrong. I haven't felt baby kick. I'm already... 20 weeks, I should feel something. Um, 
And so my mom's like, okay, if you have, she's like, I'm sure everything's okay, but if you have a concern, you need to go and get it checked out. So we dropped off Gideon with the babysitter and we, um, we were going to go find out the gender too. Yeah. We were going to go do a gender reveal. Um, and we, I, I just felt like there was something wrong. Like I knew deep down, but of course, and at the time I was trying to be like, no, I'm just being anxious. I'm just being fearful. Like it's going to be okay. Um, and so we dropped off Gideon, headed to the ultrasound, and um, lady was super sweet. She was like, okay, how far along are you? Do y'all know gender? And so we were like, no, we're gonna find out gender today. We're so excited. Um, and she puts the, what is that called? The ultrasound tech puts the Doppler on my belly and like right away, you could see her face. Like the whole demeanor of her face just change. She went, oh. Yeah. And at that moment, I just knew, like, I knew that there was, um, I knew there was something wrong. And, um, anyway, I just, I, I remember, like, my heart just sunk. And I was like, this can't be happening. Like, this is. This is supposed to be the hap like the happiest time of our lives, finding out gender, like we're gonna do a gender reveal. And um anyway, she she said that I, I can't I there's not a heartbeat. Um and so I was like in my mind I was like, okay, check again, maybe your machine's messed up. And she um she's like there we can't find a heartbeat. And so she went ahead and so she went ahead and took pictures of the baby and like um, took measurements to see kind of when she thought the baby passed and um, if there were any like visible signs in the ultrasound that could have showed what happened. Um, and she wasn't able to see anything. She said baby looked perfect and there wasn't any visible signs in the ultrasound that she could, you know, point the loss to. Um, and so from leaving there, um, she, she gave us the pictures, gave us all the stuff and we headed out and I just remember, I, I was trying to hold it all together. I cried a little bit in the ultrasound room, um, but when we got up to the car, I just lost it. I started bawling and I, um, I was like, what do, what do we do from here? I don't, I don't know where, what to do, what we're going to how we're gonna tell our families, like. Um, so I called my mom, cause she was keeping Gideon at the time, and um, I told her that we we lost the baby. And she was like, you just take all the time you need. She cried with me, prayed with me, cause my mom lost a baby at 20 weeks as well. And so she knew what I was going through. Um, and we went and picked up Gideon. I remember I was just trying, we hadn't told my family yet. I just had told my mom. And so I was trying, I didn't want to like, and I wanted Gideon, he was only a year and a half at the time. And I wanted him to, I, I didn't want to scare him like by me just being weepy all the time with in that stage. But I also wanted him to know what was going on. So we picked him up and we went home and we, as I think we kind of explained to him, but I don't think he really, no. it was over his head. He didn't, he didn't really even know that I had a baby in my belly because he was so young. We were still living in our camper at the time. And so I remember we went home to our camper and um, Austin took Gideon inside, laid him down for a nap and I went out on the front steps and I called Carlin, my best friend, and I just started bawling and told her what happened. Um, and she was like, I'm flying there right now. I'm getting a plane ticket and I'm coming. And so, um, we didn't know what to do. Um, we, one of my brothers had just had a baby and they recommended a great doctor for us. Um, and so we got an appointment the next, I think the next day or two days. Yeah. The next day. Yeah. The next day we got an appointment with him and, um, really sweet guy Christian doctor and we um, went in with him he did an ultrasound just to confirm 
Um, and then we. S yeah, he came in and like he was really tender-hearted. He started crying. Um, him and his wife had a miscarriage later on in a pregnancy, and just a really sweet sensitive guy not not like the typical doctors we had we had been to it, mm -hmm. it really seemed like he cared about us and our situation and not just getting us fixed and out the door yeah yeah he, he probably spent like an hour and a half with us that first visit just yeah. just, just talking, talking to us through. just well and i remember i was blaming myself because i remember i had i had rode a four-wheeler or a jet ski or something like not long before and I just felt like I was blaming myself I was like well what if what if I caused this like what if it was me like if I wouldn't have rode that would the baby been fine like kind of blaming myself for a lot of it and he was like it's not he's like it's not your fault there's there it's it was nothing that you did um, the baby looks completely healthy and Anyway, just reassuring me because I remember crying and telling him, I think, what like, what if I did something? What if I could have prevented this? And anyway, it was really, really a good first visit and just talking us through the grieving process and everything. You got a hair in his mouth. Oh, you had a hair in your mouth? I would crack too. After we met with the doctor that day, he scheduled us to come in and be induced on July 1st. So that would have been like a couple days later. So we had a couple days. And I remember during that time, um, it just, I felt, it felt so weird because I was still pregnant. I still had the bump, like everything on the outside looked normal. It was a really weird stage being pregnant still, but not like the baby not being alive and like knowing that I was gonna have to deliver in a few days. Um, and I, they, we had the option of doing a DNC um, or just delivering and I, I wanted to be able to see the baby for like, for grieving and um, like have a burial and everything. And so we ended up um, opting to deliver. And so we went in the night before, gave me some like induction medicine. Um, and then the next morning I, uh, or what, did we go in that morning? No, we went, we stayed we, the night, Yeah, right? we stayed the night. Yeah, we stayed the night, and then the next morning, yeah, on July 1st, we had the baby that, like, mid-afternoon, I think, or around lunchtime. Um, and, anyway, the delivery went great. I, I progressed really well. Um, I, it was something I didn't think about, like, with later-term pregnancies, you have to go through the whole delivery process. So your body has to, you know, dilate. And um, I was able to have, you know, pain meds during, like through my IV because, you know, the baby wasn't living. And so I didn't have to feel anything, but um, it was a really, it was a really hard time because you're like, you're going through all of this and your body thinks that you're having a baby. But um, at the end of the day, your arm, you're gonna go home and your arms are gonna be empty and you're not gonna have that baby to hold. And so I think just being able to grieve through all of that was, it was it like your, your emotions and your minds are all just messed up because your body thinks you're doing one thing and you're not. Um, and so my mom and Jill and Jana um, came to the birth and Austin's mom and his two sisters came um, and then my best friend Carlin flew in from Tennessee and they just pampered me. They took care of me, Carlin, like we had a photographer that came in. Um, there's a ministry that comes in for like stillbirths and stuff to do photography. And she came in and took um, professional pictures of us and Annabelle um, and Gideon came, <laughs> he's smiling. Um, and Gideon came um, afterwards and we we got to hold her and I just remember like they kept telling me you know like she she was so small when she passed that she's not gonna look you know she's not gonna look like 
a baby baby just because her bones aren't completely formed and everything but when we delivered her she was beautiful mm -hmm. like and that's what like to me like um, when people say oh well it's not a baby it's just a clump of cells like to me I I that just my mind is blown because it is a baby like she had oh, yeah. She she had all of the features. She looked like a Forsyth. Like she looked like Gideon. She had her little eyes and her nose and her mouth. And I remember fingers, her, her toes. fingers. She had fingernails. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her her toes. Her little she legs. She was just a preemie. I mean, she was. She yeah. Was a baby. Like babies can be born at what twenty three weeks and still live. I think there's been some that born at twenty weeks and still live. Um, and so, anyway, she was she was beautiful, and I remember Jill had, came over to the bed, and I was holding Annabelle, and Jill was like, look at her, like, look at her mouth, and she like kind of pulled her little chin down, and I remember looking at her mouth, and she had a little tongue, and it was it was just perfect, and I was like, I just remember thinking that, like, why why did we have to lose her? What what was wrong? Like. Um, I remember when Jill opened her little mouth, I just started bawling again because I'm like, she's she's so perfect, she's beautiful. Um. Anyway, and so we stayed. They put a white rose on our door at the hospital to be like as a sign of loss. We stayed another night, and then I remember um, when we went home, there were fireworks going off because it was almost the fourth. Um, and I remember it's, you know, people are having such a good time and we're here like grieving and um, it's gonna be a long road ahead of us. Did we did we do anything? Did we go there? <clears throat> I don't know if we went to. Everything after that is such a blur for me because I feel like I was in such um, just grief. I had some depression and yeah, I feel like the next six months, I I just, I kept telling Austin, like, I I feel like I'm in a cloud. Like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not feeling much. Like, I, it was, it was a hard, hard six months of just, um, and I, and I felt bad about moving on and being happy without her, like, for a while. Um, and so we, I think us, we just had to, Austin kept telling me, like, he was a good support and just kept telling me, keep encouraging yourself in the Lord. Um, we would take long drives. I would go to work with him, like, just to be with well, somebody. We, and we had Gideon. We had, yeah, we, we had, had someone else we had, that we, that was we, depending on us. Yeah, that we couldn't forget. We couldn't just live in a state of of grief or whatever like we had to for a long period of time yeah yeah we couldn't so, live there and we, gideon i think god knew we needed a happy baby because gideon was yeah he was the happiest baby he was the happiest baby like yeah. just so easy happy energetic and i think having somebody to take care of and just a baby to hold and snuggle really helped me through the process and then um I had, I got a lot of counsel um, and just advice from other people that had been through similar situations of just the steps to take to properly grieve through it and um, a lot, I listened to a lot of worship music. Um, what was the song, what was the others. song you, we listened to, you, you liked, you know that, that guy was like acapella? Or was it acapella? No. Remember? Uh, him? Yeah. All the way my Savior leads me. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I had the one, like, I feel like through each stage of life I have these different songs, but um, for that season, I listened to um, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Um, and it was really encouraging it's a good, to me. good, powerful song. Yeah, it's a really, really good song. Um, and so I listened to that one on repeat. Um, anyway, so we were, I think... We were in a good church. Yeah. We were in a good church. We had people that loved us and 
of course our families, but other people outside that too, our friends. Yeah. Our friends. Really good just, support system. Yeah, just poured poured out to us and. Well, and a lot of people they don't know what to say when you go through a loss. And my I had five or six. I had five or six sisters that were pregnant, and we were all due like. Mm -hmm. October, November, December time frame. With all girls. With all, yeah, and all of us had girls. And um, I, I know for them that was hard because they're like, well, we don't want, like, is it hard? They, they were really open and like, is it hard for you to be around us? Like, we don't want to um, hurt you anymore. And honestly, like, I, I told them like my, the, my joy for you does not change like just because I lost my baby it doesn't negate my happiness for you and I really felt that like I I was somehow I was able to be happy for them and hold their babies and um, be excited for their different stages in pregnancy even though I lost my baby girl and I think a lot of that was I mean all of it was God's grace and his because we prayed like, Lord, please give us peace. Because I knew that that, I knew that, that was gonna be a struggle as soon as I lost her. Like I, I wanted to be happy for my sisters and there were so many babies that were going to be born in the next few months. And I said, I was asking God like, please help me to have joy for them and still be excited for them and not to have that wrestle inside of me. And he answered that prayer and I really did not struggle with that um, and asking God like well why did you take mine and not take theirs or you know those questions that I've I know I could have struggled with during the delivery um, or after the delivery the doctor looked at placenta it looked fine um, so they we did not find any reason as to why we could have lost her then um, fast forward um, we got pregnant with Evie um, like six months, seven months after. Mm, no. Right? No, I feel like it was it. Was it not a year? No. No, we got pregnant with Evie um, after. It was like. I can't remember. We had her in August. So, yeah, it would have been December because we told our family at Christmas. Okay. So, yeah, we got pregnant with Evie six months after we lost Annabelle. And then. Um, that whole pregnancy, I really struggled a lot with fear. Just f yeah, fear of and losing her. Like wanting to be excited for the pregnancy, but then also like I'm not gonna get myself excited because if I do, then I don't. And what is really silly because I was like, I don't want to be attached to this baby just in case. But of course, like I'm carrying the baby, I'm going to be attached to it. But I, I did it. I think I just had a lot of like protective things and finally I think I realized you know what God's in control and I need to just let go of these fears because it really is crippling yeah. and yeah. I need to just trust the Lord and do everything I know that I can do that's right and pray that the baby turns out uh, you know makes it to full term and there's nothing outside of that that I can do and so fear is only gonna you know, keep us from joy and enjoying the baby. Um, anyway, so it wasn't until after Evelyn's birth that I went in. Austin had, he encouraged me because I struggled with postpartum stuff after her. And he said, why don't you go get your labs done? There was another counselor that said, go get your labs done and just see like if you're deficient in anything. So I went and got a full panel of labs done. And in that... I found out that I had a blood clotting mutation. So it basically my body during pregnancy can, I can get a clot and it can go into the placenta and uh, deplete the baby of all its needs. And so we don't know for sure, but after talking with my doctor, after we found that out, um, we think that that's a, big possibility of my of what might have happened with Annabelle um, because I do have that blood clotting disorder there was she looked healthy there was nothing else that could have caused I mean that we could 
could have seen it cause that. Yeah. And we had Evie successfully. Yeah. Without knowing you had that or without yeah. doing anything. And Gideon was healthy too. So, but as a like precaution, the doctor um, with Gunner's delivery had me take blood thinner shots every day um, up until I had him and then six weeks after um, just to make sure that my blood is thin enough and that I don't have clots. Um, and so anyway, that, that has, that was kind of what happened. I cannot believe that was four years ago. Um, I know Austin, I know you grieved a lot differently than I did. I remember I grieved, you know, just outwardly crying. I think I cried every day for like six months, probably. It was, but I think you had a lot of more inward stuff and just, you're like, I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm gonna push through for my wife kind of thing and I gotta be the leader of the family. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was necessarily, I'm just gonna push through. It was like, I think I came to a place where I knew that God was in control and for whatever reason he chose to take her and there's nothing we could do could have done to you know prevent it I think once I knew that once I had that piece of like okay it wasn't something we did because if it's something we did you know or could have done you know we didn't know about her blood clotting deal if it was something we we could have done then yeah, I think I would have beat myself up a lot more. But knowing that it was out of our control, we didn't know, like, what, what else What else is it but the Lord's in control, and this was, he allowed this to happen, and we've got to, we've got to keep moving forward. We can't let this, this moment define us. And he must have wanted her with him, more than more than he wanted her here and so I just found peace in trusting that the Lord has our best interest at heart and was able to to kind of just keep going and the responsibility of trying to trying to create a a good environment for the family just didn't want to let it get us down but it was it was a good it was a test of you know how are we going to respond christianity rubber meets the road do we really are we going to practice what we preach that's what kept going through my mind like you know we're not the first person that's ever had a miscarriage we won't be the last and how do other people handle this um and so you know i didn't I didn't want to be down and out and this define the rest of our lives. Um, I want to move forward in victory. After we delivered Annabelle, we got a little box for her casket, I guess. And then um, we went out to Austin's parents' property and had a little like burial um, ceremony. For, yeah, ceremony for her. My grandparents just so happened to be in town. Yeah. And Jed and Jeer. They happened to be out they there. They happened to be out at my parents. That and day. so it was. And I didn't want it to be like a big ordeal, but we ended up having like a lot of family out there. Um, and so that was really sweet. And I think I, Rachel and Nick were out there. Yeah. They came out. Like it was, it was just a, a sweet time. We prayed and thank God. And I, did we sing a song? Yeah, I think. I think I just cried the whole time, but I think y'all did. And I remember just like hugging the box, which it sounds crazy, but I remember like, I just, I just wanted to hold my baby so bad and I couldn't. And even like holding her, you know, she's so little, like her, her little, I mean, she fit in my hand. She was so little um, that I couldn't like hold her, squeeze her, you know? And I remember holding that box and I was just like, I just, squeeze the box because I wanted a baby to hold like um and so anyway um we 
buried her and we got to, you know, dig her grave and um, somebody gifted us with a headstone and a little oak tree that um, we planted later. Um, and anyway, it was, it was a really difficult thing to go through and I think through that we've grown as a couple um, and as a family and just I think you grow th from your experiences um, anyway I know there's been a lot of people that asked a bunch of questions and I feel like this is the time to answer it because um, it's her four year birthday which is so crazy to me that it's been four years um, I think it was helpful though uh, we got we were able to get pregnant with Evie six months after and it was like right we got pregnant with her right before we her birthday would have been in November we got pregnant right before her birthday and for me I feel like knowing that I that I couldn't have had if I would have I couldn't have had Evie and Annabelle unless we would have had Annabelle like really early but I couldn't have had both of them yeah. and so I think for me knowing that God gave us Evie and like finding out that it was a girl was so exciting because I really wanted a girl um, and anyway I think God God has really grown us and he gave us so much peace and it was a long road for me um, of grief and working through all of that but um, God is faithful and he answered so many prayers Gave so much peace. He's gracious and so kind to us. So, anyway, that's the story. The long story, not so short. <laughs> um, anyway, I know a lot of you guys have prayed for us. Even a lot of y'all knew us back then and prayed for us. And I really am thankful we had so many people praying for us. Um, can't and, imagine. Can't imagine doing this without family, friends, church, or without a, a faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, you understand how people turn to anything but Christ when they go through hard times, and so. Yeah, yeah. That's the story of Annabelle. July 1st, was it 2019? Yeah. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. It's her birthday. So, and on her headstone, we wrote, In the Arms of Jesus. So that's where she's at. And somebody like drew a picture of that for us. And just the visualization of her being in Jesus' arms was so beautiful. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for praying for us. Okay, I made it back from my appointment. Kids are sleeping, and we are going to transport them inside. Gunner, I think, is just waking up. He's getting hungry. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for your love for our family and for all of your prayers, and for Gunner's crying. For remembering Annabelle Elise with us um, this week it I think every time this time of year comes around it's like up and down like I'm doing good I'm not doing good just you know remembering her wishing things could have been different but also just being thankful for where God's brought us and how far we've come and everything so anyway all that said thank you for your love thank you for praying for us and we will see you guys next week. I hope you guys have a good 4th of July.